Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at how you can VTOL, uh, manually VTOL in um, all three vehicles that can do it, all but the F-26 uh, have VTOL capabilities. So I'm going to take a look at each vehicle and how you can do that, uh, as I say, manually and what to look for on the hood uh, to help you out uh, to do that. So let's get you switched over to my view and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay then, so here we are in the AV42, the Kestrel, we'll, uh, we'll start off here. Uh, this has got a nice big hood uh, to, to start off with. And some of the things that we are looking for on the, on the hood, uh, first of all, up at the top right we've got our engine tilt which we control here with the collective, the thumbstick on the collective adjusts the tilt. Um, notice we also get a V, uh, a, a VTOL symbol, uh, if you want to call that a hover symbol down at the bottom, the circle with the aircraft in, and we get that between 85 and 90 degrees. Once we go past 85, that disappears, uh, and that's going to be useful a bit later on. Next, our uh, above sea level indicator, we can actually change that with altitude mode. On all aircrafts, you can change the altitude mode. So if we change that, we notice we get RDR, which is our radar height, how far we are above ground, basically, rather than above sea level. And again, that will help when coming into land to, to see how high you are above the landing zone. Next, another indicator that's very useful um, when trying to hover is the W indicator that we see on the hood. That's called the waterline indicator, and that is the theor theoretical line from back to front of the aircraft. It's kind of level um, line. So imagine if you took a model of the aircraft and floated it on water, there'd be some of the aircraft below and some above it, but it'd be a straight line because that's basically how floating things on water works. It will balance balance itself out. Uh, and that's, that's your waterline. Basically, it's where the front of the aircraft is actually pointed. The solid line underneath it, that's our horizon line. And then we get what's called the pitch ladder. Um, so you can see the above five is two solid lines, and that's five degrees tilt up. And then negative, we have dotted lines underneath, so we've got five, 10, 15 degrees down. And that's your pitch ladder. So when we're trying to hover, it's useful to know if we are pitched backwards or forwards, because if you're forwards, you've got, you're have got you going to have some forward momentum. If you pitch backwards, you're going to have some backwards momentum. So again, it's useful to know how we're pitched um, when we're trying to hover or, or, or in slow, stable maneuvers. The, the waterline indicator does, uh, does help a lot. And once we're actually up in the air, we'll see the vector velocity indicator, sometimes known as the witch's hat, which is the circle with three lines, one on each side, one above. And that's where our aircraft is actually headed. And again, we're gonna use that when we're coming into land. Another useful indicator on the fixed wing aircraft, um, because when whenever you're moving forward in a fixed wing aircraft, you're generating some lift. That's how, how the wings work. Um, so as long as you're going forward, you are getting some lift, um, which means it's uh, it's not as easy to slow down really to to get into a hover. And one indicator that we're going to use is the one that looks a bit like a fish in the um, AV42. It looks like a small letter A in in vehicles with a smaller hood, and that's your alpha. And the alpha is the difference between where the waterline indicator is, where the front of the aircraft is pointing, and where the aircraft is actually heading. We, we see this a lot in landing, so as you're coming down, your, vert, uh, your vector indicator is, is pointing down, but the nose is pointing up. The difference between those is your alpha. So when we're coming in to, to slow down, what we want is a very high alpha. We want the, the nose of the aircraft to be up high, so the aircraft itself is creating wind resistance. And we can do that in what's called high alpha turns. So we just come into the aircraft doing very tight turns uh, with high alpha, and that's gonna bleed all the speed, and we'll see how effective that is shortly. But first of all, we need to take off, and it's very simple in the AV42. First of all, I'm just gonna switch over to the info page over here, 
and it's because I just want to point out the TWR, that's your thrust to weight ratio, how much power your your engines have basically. And the AV42 is overflowing with their uh, thrust, 1.49. It's the highest of all the vehicles. Um, all all the vehicles today will have no uh, armament, so it's just the weight of the vehicle. Um, 1.49 is incredibly high. It's got great maneuverability um, and down basically. So with our engine tilt down, all we need to do is with no munitions on this aircraft will take off uh, at the mill power line so we bring the collective up to mill power and hands off and just let it do its thing it's hovering well it's actually going up to start flying we gradually take the tilt off we don't just turn it off altogether because it'll start falling uncontrollably and now we see the um, velocity vector indicator the circle appearing and notice the nose kind of tilted up there because we've got enough forward momentum there that we're getting lift from the airframe. Uh, it wasn't just the engines um, giving us lift there. But again, watching that uh, velocity vector to make sure it doesn't dip down too low. There we go. Engine tilt off. And we're good to go. So we'll get a bit of speed and then we'll go back into the airfield. So, 500 knots, I'm just going to come round that. Slow, nice and easy. Two and a half G turn, trying to maintain some of that speed. Look for the airfield. Cheers. So, as I say, at the moment we are at an alpha of 6 degrees, which means our nose is pointed up 6 degrees to where we're actually going on. We're almost like drifting, if you will. So to slow down, if we watch the speed now in knots, if I pull a high alpha turn, so, oop, don't over G, I'm going to reduce the collective to zero and pull fairly high on and we see that alpha going up and we see the speed dropping very fast. So I'm going to maintain going towards the airfield and pull a high alpha turn the other way. Because I'm doing this, I'm going to start adding some tilt the engines and I'm also watching for my velocity vector indicator to start dropping really fast which means I'm in an uncontrolled descent I don't want that I'm looking at my speed now 180 and start to pull it round you can see the alpha is at 23 and climbing because we are slowing down so this is quite a, a severe turn but now I've slowed down enough I'm going to start bringing up the collective again bringing the tilt down and I'm just using the yaw Bitch, just to try and bring the velocity vector round to the landing pad. Now I'm getting close. I'm going to put the TGP in head mode so I can see through uh, the controls. So now watching the velocity vector, we can see it's dropping quite landing fast. Gear. So I'm going to apply landing collective gear. till it starts picking up. Landing gear. Okay, Betty. And I'm going to bring the tilt down to almost 90. I'm going to keep it between 90 and 85. And now I'm just using the tilt of the aircraft and the thrust to slow myself down. And I can see the waterline indicator now. I'm bringing that down slowly. Bringing the collective up just to keep myself moving forward. It wants to pitch the nose up. So, again, just keeping that waterline mark above zero, um, around five if possible. Again, tilt back ever so slightly to slow down. And I'm keeping the velocity vector on the helipad if I can now. But that's where my aircraft is going. I'm going to try and aim for the far end of the helipad because I want the front end of the aircraft at the far end. And I'm controlling this purely um, on the collective. A bit higher to slow down. And down. Ready to rearm and refuel. There we go. Nice and easy. So again, to, to bleed all that speed coming into the airfield, it's collective down and pull some very high alpha turns, which means the aircraft is tilted back a lot further than the actual turn. You're kind of drifting. And that's using the airframe, air resistance on the airframe, to really bleed that speed. I wasn't using air brakes at all. It was all high alpha maneuvers. Again, using all the uh, indicators that we see, the waterline indicator, that's controlling the pitch. I don't want to go backwards too much, otherwise the aircraft will, will want to try and fly backwards and that's quite unstable we don't know where we're going I'm using the velocity vector to 
to know where my aircraft is going. That's where I want to point out where I'm going to land. And again, try and keep the tilt off 90. Um, it's It flies a little bit more like the helicopter, really, with an ever so slight tilt, um, which means you don't have to tilt backwards too far or too forwards too far to actually move forwards and backwards when you are stable, when you're flat. If the waterline indicator was at zero, you've got ever so slight forward thrust. And if you tilt back between zero and five degrees, that should be enough to give you a little bit of backwards momentum as well. So you're not having to tilt too much. But that's the AV-42. Let's jump in the F-45 and see how we go from there. Okay, here we are in the F-45. Uh, again, we've got some uh, similar readouts. We've got our alpha symbol that we're going to look for. We've got our tilt in the bottom corner, in the bottom left. We've got our vertical speed indicator, again, to see how fast we're going up and down. Useful in VTOL. And just looking at my altitude uh, readout, again, we're at ASL, above sea level. So in the F-45, alt mode is here. I'm going to hit that, again, to see my radar height. So I'm six feet above ground now, according to my radar. Once again, it's quite hard to see because of the city, but we do have a waterline mark. It's almost on the horizon, but we can use that as well. So let's get up and we'll take a look at bringing it in. So first thing first, I'm going to take the parking brake off, doing a vertical takeoff. Um, the F-45 doesn't seem to like taking off with the parking brake on. It seems to want to tilt and, and rock. Uh, with the parking brake off, so I've always found it a bit easier to just take the parking brake off and, and let the aircraft forward ever so slightly if it needs to. Looking at the max TWR on this aircraft, because it only has a single engine, um, thrust vectoring engine, but still a single engine, um, it's only got a, a 1.12 TWR absolute max. Uh, I have no weapons on other than all the weight of fuel that I'm carrying. Um, there's, there's no weapons at all in the system, so it doesn't have as much power as the AV-42, and that's very important. It means it's going to take a lot longer to react when you are falling. When you go back up to full thrust, it's going to take longer for the engines to take over and bring you back up. So you, you do need more control over your descent. You're going to take your time um, coming down. You don't want to be falling too fast, otherwise it'll become uncontrollable or you'll just slam into the ground. And not a very good landing. So let's get up there and see how we land the F-45. So I'm going to power up. I'm going to go to mill power. You can't go any higher than mill power. It won't let you put afterburners on with thrust vectoring. You're not tilting the whole engine. Again, once we're off the ground slightly, I'm just going to start bringing the tilt off a little at a time. I'm going to keep try and keep the water line marker as well at to zero or above as we tilt the engines off we'll notice it wants to kind of either go up or go down like this so try and keep the watermark now we just got enough forward momentum there that it shot up so we're getting lift now from the airframe as, as small as it is watching the velocity vectors coming down now so and just gradually taking the tilt off until we get enough speed I'm going to try and keep that vector above um, the horizon line if I can and you can see with the waterline indicator Landing I'm not here. actually moving the uh, nose of the aircraft too but it's all on the tilt it's gradually bringing it off. Now we're at uh, over 200 knots uh, I'm quite safe to bring it all the way off now we're getting to uh, Alphaburner to get some speed. Landing, Landing gear. gear up. Uh, Betty's happy. Okay then, here we are on a low approach. First of all, I'm going to radio for a landing. So, Tower Foxtrot 11 requesting vertical landing. Foxtrot 11, Tower, copy, fly heading 035. Okay then, it's going to make me land on the uh, on the destroyer. So let's go for that one instead. Just to make it even more difficult with a very tiny landing pad. There's our landing pad. Over Pull up. Again, coming for a low approach. I wanted to radio for landing so I can see the distance. So I'm, I'm about six, uh, six and a half miles out. I'm going 
going to put head mode on. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to need this to be able to see through the hood. Now, once I get to about four miles, I'm going to take the power off. And I'm going to start doing my eye alpha turns. Over G. And just keep them low. Foxtrot 1 1 Tower. Clear to land on pad 0 1. And we can see the speed just dropping, 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 dropping. Start putting some tilt on now. Go to about Landing 60 degrees. Gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. And now, put the landing gear down for Betty. Again, I'm just going to use the. Uh, the throttle and the vertical speed indicator just to get that on the ship where I want to land. I've got the nose up about 10 degrees so I'm, again I'm using the, uh, the airframe and wind resistance to slow myself down and you can see how much I've got control over my descent now with the um, with the VSI so I'm going to keep it above the ship for a second. don't want to lose too much forward momentum I'll actually get there. And like taking it very, very easy, very slowly, we can see how small of a pad I have. Gradually bringing it in. I'm watching the speed there, I don't want to uh, get too fast on the speed. I'm going to start slowing down again now. I'm going to tilt the nose up just to help bleed that speed a little. I don't want to uh, lose my height too fast. Again, keeping the uh, VSI above, uh, sorry, the uh, velocity vector above the landing pad at the moment. I don't want to come in too low of an angle at this. Start taking a bit more of that tilt off now. Keep it above the ship. More of that tilt off. And keeping the height. Gradually applying more power. Tilting the nose down. Leveling off. More power. Again, keeping that engine tilted forward slightly. I can keep tilting uh, the engine rather than tilting the aircraft. Move forward. He's off on the power now. Actually, bring it in. Nice and easy, nice and steady. A little bit more forward tilt. I was almost at 90 there. I'll start easing off on the power. Ease off too much. And we're done. Ground crew is on station. Thank you, Ground Crew. So, there you go, the F45, just take it nice and easy. Um, you don't need the, um, the V cap. Uh, you can do it all yourself, just watch the velocity um, vector, use that to, to keep an eye on where you're going. Like I say you don't want to keep it on the helipad, you want to keep it just past to maintain your height, and then you slow down and you bring it down onto the pad. Much uh, much easier than trying to do some kind of combat, slow down and, and land all at the same time. Uh, again, use the tilt in the fixed wing to try and get forward momentum, you don't want to tip the, the vehicle too far forwards or too far backwards because it becomes very unstable and it's very hard to recover uh, in the fixed wing. So use the engine tilt uh, for that forward momentum if you feel like you're slowing down too much. And again, just no more than 10 degrees backwards if you can try and aim for that, um, for slowing down. So that was the um, fixed wings. Let's go and have a look at the heli. Okay then, here we are in the helicopter. So a, a little bit different hood. Um, we don't have the waterline indicator, instead we have this, uh, this X. This is showing us where we are heading, where we are pointing. And the circle as well is showing um, force on the centre of gravity of, of the aircraft, so we can use that when we're in a hover. If the circle, for instance, is down to the left, that means the force on the helicopter is down to the left. It's tilting um, backwards and left. We've got our collective, we've got our inputs, we've got our vertical speed indicator, uh, but most of what we're going to use is this indicator, there will be a line that projects off this, just like the indicators in the fixed wing, to show our direction of travel and speed, but we can use that to help uh, hover as well. 
first thing I'm going to do before I take off, I'm going to get the flight collected. And just looking down here at my input, I'm going to make sure that I've got a little bit of um, left hand rudder applied because as we apply collective, the helicopter wants to turn to the right. So as we do that, our takeoff is more stable. Nice and easy. Once we're up, we can gear up. And the heli, um, because it isn't uh, a fixed wing aircraft, it doesn't have um, wings basically to, to give it lift. All the lift is coming from the blades, which means it can be much more maneuverable at low speeds, it's much easier to control. But we do have to be a bit wary because it's also a lot easier to get out of control. So now as I'm flying, um, we can see the circle indicator there, so I'm tilted right off over to the right. As we can see, I am actually leaning over to the right. I start leaning over to the left, the circle goes to the left. I start tilting backwards, the circle goes backwards. And if we lean forwards, the circle goes forward. So that's showing the effect uh, on the helicopter. That helps with this line because this line is showing me the direction of travel and, and kind of the speed as well. The longer the line, the faster the travel. But we can use that to get into a hover. If we want to get into a hover, we basically want to put this circle opposite this line. Try and try and do that. See the line start getting shorter and shorter. I need to uh, probably collect well, I'm just going to fly higher. Do we see the line getting shorter and shorter and shorter? Once the line's gone, it means we're in a hover. Velocity vector is right underneath me. I don't know if you can see that down there. But, like I say, we can use the circle and the line to help get into a hover in the helicopter. And this makes it very easy for landing because we just go straight down. Just look for my helipad. So, let's do uh, a standard landing on one of the helipads. Now, first of all, let's get so we can see through our hood, uh, our cockpit. And I'll bring her around so we can see our helipad. Once again, I'm using the um, velocity vector indicator, the witch's hat, and I'm going to try and position that on, on or near the, the helipads. And also, we can see from where this X is pointing, I'm tilting back uh, to about 10 degrees, collective off, uh, and this is just helping me slow down. So now I can see the, the witch's heart has gone below um, the, the landing pads. So I can start taking that tilt off, I just want to keep some forward momentum. I don't want to go below the horizon or I'll start picking up speed, so make sure I keep that indicator above the horizon line. And that means we can just use the collective again, bring ourselves in. So just keeping the uh, velocity vector above where we want to be landing. We're going to aim for this helipad if we can. And gradually just bringing that in. So again, to try and shorten this line, to slow it down, I'm going to tilt the helicopter backwards again. I'm going to put the forced circle down against the helicopter. A bit more control of the throttle, the yaw to bring us back. The helipad, a bit of that tilt off now, I've slowed down to 30. Again, aiming for the back of the helipad. We fit all the vehicle on it. Tilting back slightly, and ever so slightly more throttle, your flare, and gradually bring it down. Oop, tail first a bit there. I was uh, leaning back a little bit too much, getting a bit hot. But uh, same principles, basically, we're using the uh, the velocity vector to, to see where we're going to guide the aircraft in, keep it just above where we want to be, and then use the throttle controls to bring ourselves down. So there we go, uh, my little video on how I do um, VTOL takeoff and landing. Um, you know, as you're starting off, do use the autopilots to get used to it, but once you are used to the aircraft, I find it much, much easier uh, to not even use the autopilots. Um, they are 
better in a stable hover if you just want to be sat in a stable hover, especially in a helicopter. Um, you know, the, the autopilot can react a lot faster than you can, so it can keep you in a much more stable hover. Uh, but when you're doing things like landings and takeoffs and, and slow speed maneuvers, you really don't need it. You just need to learn um, what the indicators on the hood are telling you, and uh, be able to read those indicators and, and just find controls um, will get you there eventually. So, once again, thanks for everybody who's uh, who's been watching. Thanks to all those that subscribe and like and pop into the Discord and say hi and things like that. I do appreciate uh, all of your comments and things like that. I either try and you know drop a like or a reply to the comments that I see to let people know that I have read them. Um, but until next time, I've been Ferret's Wheels. I'll see you later.